welcome back this week for another episode of Walking the Path Travel with Love Slavy. Want to say thank you for joining me again this week. Blessings, blessings to each and every one of you who are viewing. Let's go ahead and get started into prayer and then we'll begin the lesson. Father, we come to you on this particular time and we want to, first of all, uh, just ask for repentance for any sins that we may have committed, we may have thought uh, unconsciously or consciously, Father God, we submit ourselves totally to you. I submit myself totally to you, Father God. And in your presence, Lord, I ask you to clean me up with the, the precious blood of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to anoint me uh, for the words that I am going to speak for. And I thank you that you will take hold of my tongue and you will bridle whatever I need not say, Father God, and allow me to speak what you would have me to say. To say, I thank you, Father God, for those who are viewing and you will touch your children. They will hear their portion of the word, Father God. They will, this word will be a rhema word to someone, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this hour. And I thank you, Lord, that you are allowing me to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, blessings, blessings, blessings to you again this week. Uh, yes, I am excited. Just finished a series on the power of your spoken word. And as I was preparing for today uh, to come into the studio and bring your word, I had no word. And I'm like, Lord, uh, what am I going to do? I, you know, I don't have anything to say. Um, just being very transparent with you on today. Uh, today was the day that I, I took off from work. Uh, when you get ready to view this, this broadcast, it will be several days past. But uh, earlier, it was my birthday. And I decided to take some days off with the COVID and everything, the pandemic season that, that uh, was happening. Uh, not really able to get out and uh, travel or go and do anything, but I just decided I wanted to just have that time off and just do some different things that I had not had an opportunity to do around the house or, or you know, spend some time with my mom or whatever other like that. And so, therefore, in all of this excitement, uh, I had not prepared anything, and I said, "Well, what, what am I going to do? You know, what, what am I going to do?" And the Lord told me, it's not for me to say. Other words, this is not my program. This is not my broadcast. He has allowed me to have this broadcast. He, he has allowed me to have this program. He has allowed me to have this platform. So it is not my words that I'm speaking. It's his words. So God had to, had to check me. And I said, Father... <laughs> You are so right, but I was so concerned about what I needed to say to you. And again, as I said, he reminded me, it's not my words, you know, that I'm speaking. I'm speaking his words. I am speaking what he tells me to speak. So I immediately had to go and repent. I got on up and got dressed and came on into the studio and I'm still driving. And I said, Lord, Thank you for correcting me. Thank you for getting me straight. And I mean, immediately where I had been tired, I was totally rejuvenated. I was renewed. I was excited. I mean, I found myself checking to make sure I wasn't speeding, but I was in a hurry to get here. It was like an urgency. I had to, to get here. And in the process of, of moving, it seems as though the cars on the freeway, they weren't moving fast enough. And I was like, Lord, I got I to gotta get there. And I'm trying to figure out, from the time that it was an hour or so before, I was mumbling around the house and and didn't want to even get dressed, about ready to go and lie down. And But my spirit wasn't easy or anything like that with it. And I, and I kept toiling and kept toiling and sat down and looked at a couple of scriptures and, and still didn't have any peace. But I was understanding, get up, get up. And as I'm driving down the road, I said, Lord, what is it? He said, just show up just show up so that's my message to you today just show up you may not be feeling like it. you may be tired be you may not have anything to say you may feel like you don't have anything to contribute you you may figure like this doesn't have anything to do with you but if god has already set a place aside for you okay let, let thank you hallelujah okay this particular area where i am right now 
I'm going to bring it to you just as the Holy Spirit just, just downloaded it to me. He said, this is my table, and I have prepared a place for you. You guys know that scripture. He says, I have prepared a place for you in the presence of your enemy. But in this particular case, this is my prepared place. Well, in Genesis, it talks about where God set things together and he brought Adam to the place called there. So this is my prepared place of there. We're here. As long as I show up. All I need to do is get into my place, get into the plan, the purpose, the, the, the predestined place that God has for me, and he's going to do the rest. So see right now, as you hear me talking, this is not me. This is Holy Spirit that's talking, telling off on myself so that I can be able to help somebody else that's out there. The fact that he's just showing up, I said, Lord, Lord, he said, what about how it was in the scripture with Moses? Moses God had given him an assignment. God had given him a commandment, told him what to do. And he's, and Moses was kept looking at everything. Of, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. And he said, well, Lord, when I go, what do I tell him? Who did I tell him that sent me? And he said, tell him that I am sent. So, of course, it didn't make any sense to Moses. But as I was driving, I began to understand more vividly the fact of the matter is when you show up, <laughs> glory to God, when you show up, hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. When you show up, my brothers and sisters, that is an act of obedience. So therefore, you are following through on God's commandment for what he is already predestined for you to do. I said, Lord, don't let me forget this as you would have me to teach this. And I haven't even got to the scripture and what have you yet, but I, this is something I, I've got to be able to get out because like I said, I was bubbling over with it. I said, Lord, share with me the perfect scenario and how to be able to teach this and how to be able to get someone to understand it and grip it, grip it and grasp it. And the Lord said, let me get you to understand. You are my tool. And I take you and use you where I need for you to be. I take you and place you in a place where I need for you to be. And I use you the way I need for you to be used. I said, glory to your name. It made me think about with Jesus, when he and the disciples were there and they had a specific place to be. And he said, I need to be i need to go i it need be for me to go into samaria because if he needed to show up had he not showed up the woman there would not have received her blessing had he not showed up as it was already predestined and assigned the disciples were trying to get him to go somewhere else because it did not make sense to them for him to go through Samaria, whatever it was in their mind, it was like out of the way. It was it was taking up too much time. Sometimes we've got to be able to go the extra mile and just show up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said, okay, Lord, give me the scenario. Give me the scenario. And what the Lord gave to me while I was driving, I asked him, I said, Holy Spirit, please do not let me forget this. And he didn't. So what the scenario he gave me was this. Does the frying pan or the skillet, the pot, does it tell the chef when they want him to use him? Can that skillet talk to the cook, talk to the chef and say, no, nah, today I don't feel like you're using me. I, I, I don't I, I don't feel like to be used by you. I I, I refuse. I, I want to rest today. No, 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 no. That skillet, that pot, whatever that 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 dish is that the chef needs for cooking, it is a tool. It has no voice. It cannot be able to speak. Several reasons. One of the things is that that skillet was bought by the chef. The chef is the one 
who decides as he's preparing, he or she is preparing a dish, which particular tool is going to be the best in order to cook the dish. You guys know about a cast iron skillet. You know, there's certain things that you go through and you prepare in that cast iron skillet. It gives it a much better flavor. If you got a Teflon skillet, you know there are certain things that you prepare in a Teflon skillet that's going to give it more flavor. There are certain things that you're going to prepare in a, a stainless steel or a, a type skillet, a pot and what have you. So the, the chef is the one who has the knowledge Oh, somebody come on here with me. I hope, I hope I'm reaching somebody. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. I hope I'm reaching somebody out there. The chef is the one who has the knowledge, first of all, of the meal that he's going to prepare. So therefore, the skillet cannot tell him how he wants to be used. It was the chef, as I said before, who bought the skillet in order to be used. So now, Hallelujah. When that gate, when it came back to me, it made me think about us. We were bought with the price of Jesus' blood in order to be used by God for the work that he has already assigned. So who are we? Ha, let, me, let, me, let me just break this down. Who, who did I think that I was to be so bold to tell God, I don't want to go in today. I just want to stay at home and rest. I still want to celebrate my birthday. Who, who did I think that I was to be so bold to be a pastor that's been called by the Lord, to be a person that's been called into ministry, to be a person to be called into evangelism, to be a person who is called into teaching? Who did I think that I was? To be a person who God has called in when he decides that he wants to give me a prophetic word to be able to give the prophetic word. Who did I think that I was when it was God who was the one who says now it's time for me to speak the healing because the atmosphere is just right. And because of their faith, you go through and speak and let them know that they are already healed. Who did I think that I was? Who did I think that I was? How could I... Ah, every once in a while, every once in a while, we all get to that place. It's like, Lord, I'm tired. I just don't feel like it. And God understands. But when we are like that, when we are really, when we're tired, when we're going through those particular issues, all God tells us to show up. If he does not tell you to rest, then all he needs you to do is show up because when you show up and you come on that place that has already been marked okay you know many times many of you have seen television programs and as they are going through and doing the filming the uh, persons who are on stage it has already been marked if there's an x or some kind of cute little uh, 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 picture or whatever that's on the floor that when the person comes out on stage that the uh, conductors back in the back have already said to that person, okay, you need to go to such and such spot because that has already been designated. So all they have to do is show up in that spot and the camera crew gets busy and everything goes on and zoom, everything begins. So I want to tell somebody, I don't know who I am speaking to today for my own personal experience because I will definitely be going back and be re-listening to this broadcast so that I can get fed again from it. Whoever I'm speaking to today, my brother and sister, all God wants you to do is show up. If he has not told you to sit down and rest, all he needs you to do is show up because he will do what he said. He is not a man that he should lie. He gave you a promise, and he's going to fulfill that promise. In order for you to get that promise, hallelujah, you got to show up. you got to show up. Many, many times people uh, have uh, put their name in the pot and what have you, and, and the, the, the uh, persons who's doing the, 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 uh, for the prizes may say, it need not be necessary for your, uh, um, uh, for your attendance for you to be able to win. But in the cases when it comes to the Lord, your attendance is needed. Your attendance is necessary because you got to show up. When by you showing up, that's part of your work. Faith without works is dead. 
You have all the faith there is from Yazoo to Yazoo, but you don't come up and show up at the time when you need to show up. How do you think you're going to end up being blessed? How do you think you're going to end up being a blessing for somebody else? All you need to do is be there. You have no idea who else's blessing is attached to just you showing up. Who else's blessing is attached just to you showing up? When I got here this evening, I had an opportunity to speak to two uh, cleaning ladies that's here in the building. Never seen them before walk in and just, you know, spoken their language. When is, when, you know, when is noches? Como, como esta? Yo estoy bien? You know, going through and just doing a little conversation with them. And in the process of that, we had a conversation. And it blessed me because I don't get an opportunity to practice on my Spanish. And so in the process of that, I began to tell them the story. They asked me, how did I learn to speak Spanish? Hallelujah. And I said, it's about a big proclamation me, me be so well. It was because of my great grandfather that I began to be able to speak this language. Many, many years ago as a little girl, six years old in the country in, in, in Hungerford, Texas, where he stood, my grandfather was known. His name was Mr. Benny Roberts. And praise God, he couldn't read or write, y'all. But God allowed him to be able to speak three different languages. And one of the languages was Spanish. And there were many Spanish people in that particular community back when I was six years old that were getting cheated by so many people because they hated him because in there it was a, such heavy prejudice. But my great-grandfather, hallelujah, my great-grandfather, he stood up. A man that could not read or write, and he showed up. He showed up and was being an ambassador for those men. And they said, bless you, Mr. Benny. And as a little girl, I looked up at my great-grandfather. And I said, Lord, let me carry on this legacy. Let me carry on this legacy. If he, if he had not showed up, then the days had come. I would not have even probably had an interest in speaking Spanish and taking a semester and, and learning how to read it and learning how to write. The many people in my life from the time that I was six and begin to start speaking the Spanish and getting the language and working on the pronunciation and the enunciation of the words and conjugating the verbs and what have you. The many times that I've learned to be able to do that, it is so many people that I've been able to help that even I to this day do not know how many. And because of that, I've been able to go in to bilingual classes and be able to teach those who have a first language of Spanish, go through and teach them English. One mother walked into a classroom where I was teaching and I was giving the instructions in Spanish. She wanted her child to be in an English speaking room and I'm giving the instructions in Spanish. She walked in to be able to give the daughter her lunch money. I'm speaking the in instructions in Spanish. I always would give them in their first language. Then I'd go back and repeat it in English. Well, she walked out the door. By the time she walked out the door, I finished it in Spanish. Then I went back and repeated it in English. She went straight to the principal's office and said, told the principal, says, no, 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 my daughter's in the wrong place. I thought you had put her in a place that she could be able to speak English. And the principal had to go through and explain everything. And, and, and then later on, when the daughter got, to, to the, uh, got home and the mother was talking to her about it, the mother, the child was, was, no, mommy, don't take me out. That following week they came and the mother and daughter both in the principal's office and they're crying. They're crying. The mother is Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My daughter has told me what all that this, this teacher is doing for her. And I had just gone to the principal the day before because her daughter was so accelerated that she did not need to be in my class. She was ready to go to an English speaking class. I had just told the principal, I said, she needs to be advanced. And when they found out that she was going, they thought it was because of them complaining. And the principal had to tell him, said, no, the teacher has found, the teacher has found your child to be advanced and she needs to be there. Oh, I want to tell somebody today, just show up, just show up, just show up to get your blessing. You have no idea when you come, ah, what difference it makes. You have no idea what difference 
it makes. I have two scriptures to be able to share with you, and I, I pray that you are able to hear uh, the words from in, in 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. It says, but as far as you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Just show up. Don't give up. Don't decide to quit. Don't decide to get lazy. Don't decide to slow down. Ah, just show up. Just show up. Don't listen to the enemy in, in no kind of way. Don't listen to the enemy. Deuteronomy 12 and 28 says, Observe and obey all these words which I have commanded you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good and what is right in the sight of the Lord our God. Here's the thing. Because my great-grandfather did what was right. What God had commissioned him to do without him even knowing it. The man could not read or write English. I remember standing in the store after he had gotten his purchase. And they said, here you go, Mr. Benny. You know that you have the long little charge card where I owe you. And every time he go through and he ring up his purchase, they ring it all up and, and then they stick his little card. He said, here you go, sir. We need your signature. And I saw him put an X and I'm thinking, why would he put an X there? How, how, how could that be his signature? Because I had no idea. I had no idea until he was till, till he was dead and buried and I was grown and married with children. But this man could not read or write. He was so intelligent, so intelligent, but he could not read or write. But still, he showed up. Because he showed up, so many men in the community, in the Spanish community, looked highly upon a skinny black man. And not on the fact he dark complexion black man because he showed up so i want to tell you it matters not what you can do or what you cannot do just show up just show up because as you show up god is going to meet you there you want a wonderful rendezvous come and be rendezvoused with the holy spirit just show up. Just show up. Just have a willing spirit and just show up. Well, that's all I have for you today. I pray that this has been a blessing to you and for you. If somebody is out there and have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, let me turn in the word of God because I want to read it um, to you exactly as it is in here in Romans, in Romans um, 10 verses 9 and 10 about those that need to that desire to be able to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior verses 10 and 9 it says because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord recognizing I'm reading from the amplified version recognizing his power authority and majesty as God and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed from the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. God is the one who justifies you. That's why you can't just do whatever you, it is that you want to be able to do. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly. Remember last week I talked about talk to you about the power of your spoken word openly resulting in and confirming this salvation so today if you have heard what i said and understood that you have been way out of whack and have not been in your place with god and have you want to be able to have a god to come and meet you like the woman at the well and make a difference in your life you understand if you die today you close your eyes and you die this very minute and you don't know whether or not you would be in heaven i'm gonna tell you you wake up and you may be in hell so i would say to you today 
all you have to do is confess, believe, and confess Jesus Christ. Forgive me, Jesus. I was wrong. I will accept you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in you, and I want to be saved. I accept the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I accept my salvation. So he says, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So if you believe in your heart that, and you speak out of your word, I receive you, Jesus Christ, as my Savior and Lord, I want to let you know just like that. That's all it takes. Because you showed up. You showed up. And you let the devil know that he no longer can control you. That now you're going to walk and learn how to have the mind of Christ. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up. Everything is not going to be hunkadori. It's not going to be all roses. It's not going to be all smelling sweet and what have you. You're still going to have some struggle. But what it is, because of the fact that you made the decision at this particular point to do and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you now have heavenly support. You have the whole host, two-thirds of the angels, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, as well as all those angels that I said that's on your side, as well as brothers and sisters that are here on earth that will walk with you. So I pray today and thank you for receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If somebody out there been struggling, straddling the fence, you know how to do the very same thing. Lord, forgive me. Bring me back home. I'm the prodigal son of the prodigal daughter. Bring me back, Lord. Help me to get straight. I'm sorry that I didn't show up where I needed to be. Father, I just forgive me. I repent. That's all you have to do. And those of us that may have gotten a little bit of weary and we may have been breath you know we you know how we get a little winded this may have been something to just give you a little bit of a recharge so that you can be able to go on further i want to thank you for your time today and bless you see you on next week i am lady v thank you for watching <laughs>